day after day, we do things on autopilot. And these little actions in the moment seem so insignificant, but they are creating our lives. These default actions are our habits. And if you want to see your life change, take a look at your habits. That's what I did. And in this episode, I'm sharing the five habits that I want to create in 2024. So let's dive in. Welcome to the School of Self-Image, where personal development meets style. Here's your hostess, Master Life Coach, Tanya Lee. Hello, my friends. We are three weeks into the new year. How are we doing? Are we still excited? Are we still pumped? Are we still ready for 2024? (laughs) If not, it's all okay. I promise you. I remember For years, my pattern was to be so excited for the first week or so, and I would just see myself slipping back into old patterns and recreating the same old situation that I'd done previously and the years before. And what I want to tell you, if you can relate to that, is number one, any moment is a chance to start again. I do this all of the time throughout the year. I'm like, whoa. I can do a reset right now. And number two, the work that needs to be done is around your self-image. When you change how you see yourself, you change what you do. You will always act in accordance to your self-image. And changing your self-image is an interesting thing because it requires that you use your imagination. I was just talking to my we'll just call her my stepdaughter, even though Fonz and I aren't officially married, but I was talking to his daughter who is 11 and Fonz is all about her writing papers. He was like, you need to be writing research papers. Like I want you to learn how to research and, and figure things out. And so we were coming up with ideas of things that she could research and, or write about. And I said, what about today? If we just write a paper on the 18 year old Ambi. And she was like, I don't know who she is. And I'm like, that's the beautiful thing. You literally get to make her up. Think about who you admire. Think about the qualities that you like in people. Think about what you want to be thinking about yourself. Think about where you maybe want to be going to school and what kind of friends you want to have and how you want to be dressing and how you want to keep your room. Like think about all of it and you get to make up this amazing story about 18 year old you. But it's not just enough to use our imagination, our imaginations need evidence to really root in that self image. And that's why I love the work that we do within our membership. It's all about us deciding on purpose, the women we want to be and the results that we want to create. And then we live into her with the tools that I teach within the membership. And one of the things that we focus on are our habits. Our habits are those things that we do day in and day out. And usually these habits are just on autopilot. We just do them without even thinking. That's how you know it's a habit. You don't even have to think about it. You just do it without thinking. It's like getting into a car and driving. Most of us who have been driving for years, we don't even have to think about it. We just know when to stop. We know when to go. We know the gas pedal. We know how to put it into drive and reverse. Like it's just automatic. But there was a time when you were learning to drive where it took a little bit of effort. And that's what it feels like to create a new habit. But our habits are reinforcing our self-image. So for example, if you see yourself as someone who is, let's say, disorganized, you will prove that true. You will not put things where they need to be. You may have a messy closet. You may have a Google Drive that's just a hot mess, <laughs> which I have. I can relate to. Thank goodness for my assistant who helps me keep my Google Drive clean. But you will always prove that to yourself. Equally, If you see yourself, if you imagine yourself to be an organized woman, you are going to start having inspiration to take steps to prove that to yourself. 
And the way you do that is to begin to create what I call self image habits. In fact, if you are in the membership, there's a whole class in the collection just on this one topic. It's called self image habits, and you can read all about it. There's a beautiful workbook that's involved if you want to focus on your habits. But habits are creating our lives. The things that we do day in and day out are literally the building blocks of our lives. And so if you want to change your life, you need to change your self image. And if you want to change your self image, start creating new habits to reinforce the new image that you want to have of yourself. So ask yourself, like, who do you want to be? How do you want to see yourself this year? And when I started to think about this question for myself, I started to think about my word of the year, which I shared last week, which is royal. And I started to think about the times in my life where I felt most alive. And I'm at a place in my life, you all, where I am really happy. I'm like genuinely happy. I'm so happy with my relationship. I'm so happy with where we live. I'm so happy with my business and my team and my community. I'm, I, I'm happy, but I have lost a little bit of that spark that those days where I was just like, oh my God, I'm so excited to wake up and get to work and to do the things. It's almost like I've, I've gotten into this pattern of just enjoying, which is a beautiful thing, and riding the wave. But I miss that aliveness, that, oh my God, I just cannot wait to saunter into this day. And so I was thinking about the times in my life where I felt the most alive. And what was I doing then? What were my habits then that I have let go of, that I have forgotten about that I just haven't been engaging in. And when I started to journal on this, I realized that there was a moment in my life when I was actually first starting my business. So for those of you who are starting your business, I know that you may think, oh my God, if I could just get to where Tanya is or so-and-so is, I'd be so much happier. But I'm telling you, there is something about that fire that you have right now that so many of us miss, myself included. I want it back. I want that fire back. And so I was thinking about that time in my life and what I was doing then. And you have to realize I started my business back in, I don't know, 2009 or 2008. And if you think about the world then, it was very different than the world now. Like, of course, we had the internet back then, but it wasn't as robust as it is now. We didn't have AI back then, at least not at the level we have it now. We had Instagram, or I don't know, did we have Instagram then? I can't remember. It came soon thereafter, if not. But it was just a silly platform where we were posting food pics, and we were all trying to figure it out. It wasn't what it is now, where everything's so curated, and and you have to do this and that to get into the algorithm. So I wasn't on my computer and my phone as much. And there were certain things that I was doing then religiously that kept that fire alive. And then I started to think of my, about my word royal and like how I want to treat myself this year. If I want to see myself as a royal being, which I think we all are, what do I want to say to myself? How do I want to treat myself? And so with those two questions, I came up with five habits that I am committed to creating this year and making them habits, making them just autopilot, just what I do. Because the other day I woke up and I watched myself. I encourage you all to do this. Just watch yourself in a normal day and all of the things that you just do by default. And so for me, I woke up and I immediately grabbed my phone. Now, there was a period where I was putting my phone in the other room, but it has made its way back to my bed, (laughs) which we're going to talk about that in a minute. So I immediately grab my phone and I don't go on any apps, but I turn on music, which isn't a bad thing. I love having music in the house. And so I turned on music. I got up, I put on my robe and I went downstairs and I cranked up the Jura, which is my coffee maker. And I made myself a cup of coffee and then I opened up my laptop and I checked Slack and I got to work. 
And I watched myself do this. And I asked myself, if I continue to do this day in and day out, is this the kind of life that I want to live? And does this reflect back to me a royal being? Another way I thought about this was, if I were to truly see myself as a queen, is this how I would start my day? And the answer was no. And that's when I was like, okay, girl, let's take a look at these habits. What do you need to bring back into your life? What do you need to stop doing? And I came up with five habits that I want to focus on this year. And I recommend that you do this as well. And you can do more habits. In fact, there's another class within the membership called 12 Habits. Last year, what we did, we started our year off thinking about one habit a month that we wanted to master. And that you can find also in the collections area. And by the way, in case you didn't know, the doors to the School of Self-Image membership are open right now. And if you want to dive deeper into this work and really amaze yourself this year with how much progress you can make by focusing on your self-image, which is the one thing that's determining everything, Instead of focusing on all the action that you need to take and and all the plans that you need to make, it all starts with your self-image because if you cannot see yourself doing these things, you will never do them. And that's why when you begin to change your self-image, the action becomes easier, the plans become easier to execute, and you will start to see massive change in your life. And so if you want to join us, let's do this thing. You can go to schoolofselfimage.com forward slash join. And let's go. I cannot wait to see you inside. We have fun inside this membership. And it's so inspiring to see all of the the transformations and all of the support and the community itself is just incredible. But you have so many tools and you have coaching. You have all of the support that you need to change your self-image and therefore change your life. So I am focusing on five specific habits that I really want to focus on this year. And I have to give myself a lot of credit because I've established a lot of really good habits already. Now, if you would have asked me this question years ago, I'd be like, girl, I got about 20 habits I need to to change. But I've been doing this work for a long time, but you never finish. You know, you have those years where you're like, oh my God, I'm just crushing it. And then you'll have those years of like, ah, something was off this year. And last year for me, it was like I created so much and it was the best year in our business. And I made a lot of changes. I moved to a new city and building a house, like a lot of good things, but something was off. And that's what made me really think about this question. What are the habits that I can bring back into my life? to get me back into alignment, so to speak. And so the five habits that I am focused on this year is number one, I want to unplug more. And this is a general one, but specifically, I want to unplug from my phone more than anything. I have found myself on my phone more than ever last year. So it's no wonder, like you can start to look at the, the patterns. Okay, the year that you spelt a little off, oh, well, let's look at it. Well, that was the year that you spent more time on your phone. Could the two be correlated? Probably so. <laughs> and so I, you know how on the iPhone you get that weekly report. I remember I got it about, I don't know, a month ago and I was shocked. I was like, are you kidding me? I spent that much time on my phone and I started to think about all of the things that I could be doing with that time. Calling my mom, calling my dad, checking on them, working on my business, organizing my closet, things that would actually improve my life, getting packed up for this move that we're about to have. But instead, grabbing a phone is an addiction. And it gives you that dopamine hit. And we love our dopamine, don't we? I am not excluded from this. I love a good dopamine surge. (laughs) And every time I pick up that phone and I open up my Instagram, which now is all houses, I'm like, ooh, that felt good. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. Let's go on Pinterest. Let's Google some stuff. Let's just 
be on our phones or on our computers and we are not in our lives. And it's becoming such a problem, I think, for most people. And trying to break that addiction, it's not easy. I've noticed over the last month since I got that report, because I don't know why I haven't really been paying attention to the report, but we all need to look at that report and think about the number of hours a day you're spending on your phone and what else you could be doing with that time. Maybe having a conversation with your child or sitting down with your partner and talking about your goals, or maybe looking at your finances, or maybe just taking a nap or going for a walk. And so looking at that report, I was just like, okay, this is not who I want to be. This is not very royal, Tanya. And so, you know, over the last month, I've just been noticing my tendency to want to grab my phone. Even like when you're standing in line at the grocery store, instead of just looking around at people and striking up conversations, everybody is on their phone. Everybody's looking down. And I was like, I want to look up into my life. I don't want my life to be one big looking down into my phone. But I've noticed how many times I want to do this. And it's hard to break this habit. But it's one that I'm committed to doing this year. And the way I'm going to do this is number one, I'm going to make my phone a little bit dumb. (laughs) And what I mean by that, I'm going to take a lot of the apps off that I find myself going on a lot. Now, I have a couple of apps that I am on quite a bit. One of them is thanks to my friend Robin. We all love to play spades. Her um, fiance and myself and Bonds and her, we love to play spades. And so she found this app where we can all play spades together. (laughs) But even if they don't play I can still go and get into a room and play spades with people. And I love card games. I don't know what it is about my brain, but my brain loves a good card game. And so I found myself just playing spades at weird times of the day. And I'm like, what am I doing? I mean, would Oprah or Kate Middleton or I don't know, any person of high status be sitting around playing spades right now? (laughs) I'm calling myself out, y'all. These are the things you all need to know that we all struggle with. And the answer is no, I wouldn't. And so I'm going to have to take this app off my phone because if it's there, I'm going to be tempted to go on it. The other one that I really enjoy, has anyone ever played Waduko? Is that how you say it? With the blocks? I don't know what it is about this game, but my brain loves it. It cannot get enough of this like... Tetris, trying to figure out how things fit and, you know, you're trying to make straight lines. Anyway, I can find myself just playing this game until the wee hours of the morning. And I'm like, girl, you've got to stop. This is not healthy. And so with that said, those two are coming off. And even saying that you all, I can feel my body getting sad. I can feel that, but, 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 but wait, can't we just leave it on there and you just control it more? And I, yeah, we could do that, but I want to stop it. And I'll tell you why in a minute with another goal that I have or habit that I want to create this year. And so I'm having to retrain my brain as to where to get dopamine from. And when you've been getting these cheap hits of dopamine, going to more, you know, deep nurturing hits of dopamine that actually make your life better. It's not easy. Now, the other two apps that I use a lot, but I mean, I go on them a lot, but I know that I can leave them on my phone and not have as much of an issue with is Instagram and Facebook. And here's why. With Facebook, I only go on my business account on my phone, which gives me access to my Facebook groups. And I want to be able to get in there because there are moments where, let's say, maybe I'm sitting in the doctor's office and I want to go in there and comment and see what you all are up to. And so for me, that's a very productive use of my time. And with Instagram, I want to be more active on Instagram this year. And that's the the crux. That's the hard part is when you have a business that 
requires that you share your work and you put yourself out there, you have to find the balance between unplugging and plugging back in. And for me, this all comes down to what's the intention. If I find myself just grabbing my phone to avoid something else, if I'm just trying to pass time, then I know I need to put it down. I need to do something else. And I actually enjoy being on these two platforms. I enjoy interacting with the community. I respond usually, not all the time, sometimes my team does, but most of the time I'm time to messages and to comments. And so I don't want to lose that touch in my business because I, I love feeling connected. And so it's me figuring out the balance. But what I do know is that I want to unplug more from devices in general this year. Instead, I want to plug back into life, like what's around me right now, the people that really matter, nature, the projects that I'm excited about. Now, the good thing is I am very productive too. It may sound like I just sit around and play spades on my phone all day. I promise you that's not it, but I get a lot done in a day. And so it's the time that I'm not doing that, that I find myself you know, playing Waduco at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. But there's so many other great things that I could do with my time during those moments. And so I'm really excited to get that report back at the end of the week. That's like, girl, you did it. You really did unplug more and plug back into what matters the most. Now, with that said, the second habit that I want to create this year, I can't believe... I stopped doing. When I was talking about the time of my life where I was so just excited and alive, there was one thing that I was doing every single day religiously. I could not get enough of it. And I've noticed, again, over the last few years. I've noticed it gradually becoming less and less. And I think it's because I've been on my phone more. It's getting those quick hits. I can go on my phone and look at quick articles and, and, and learn that way. But I used to read religiously. I would read probably two books a a week. I was reading every night, every morning. I don't read that much anymore. In fact, during one of our virtual cocktail parties for VIP members, one of the questions they often ask is, what are you reading right now? And I told them, I'm like, I'm not reading a lot right now. And I understand it too, because you've consumed so much. And so a lot of times I'm focused on creation, but then I think about being on my phone and I'm consuming stuff stuff in that way. And I started to think, huh, So that time when you were most alive, most excited, you were spending less time on your phone and you were reading more. Maybe we should try reading more. I want to get back into books. There is a world that exists within books that opens you up to new ideas, new perspectives, new artists, new lands, new stories. And I've missed it. And yet... In the moment, it's so much easier to grab a phone versus pick up a book. Because again, it's not that quick, cheap hit of dopamine. Like You have to really think. You have to really focus. But that's what my brain and my soul needs right now. She needs a lot of focus, a lot of space. And that's a beautiful thing with books. When you grab a book, you're saying to yourself, I have the space to read right now. And it may only be for five or 10 minutes, but it does so much for your self-image. It tells me the story of I am a woman who is constantly learning, growing, evolving. I'm a woman who is curious. I am a woman who, well, depending on the book, maybe I'm a woman who's cultured. I'm a woman who's into her health, depending on what you're reading. Books And what's on your bookshelf says a lot about who you believe yourself to be. And I talk a lot about that within the membership. Cleaning your bookshelf can do wonders for your self-image. But even just the act of reading and what you're reading can tell your brain, hey, this is who we're becoming. This is what's important. This is what we're focused on. 
And so my commitment for this year is I want to read more books. And I was thinking about how many I should commit to. And at first, my brain was like, well, let's go, let's do one a week. But I think for me, two books a month is going to be the perfect amount. And I've got to decide what I want to read. Like where and that and that's always such an interesting question. Like, what do you want for the next chapter of your life? And what books will support you? I remember there was a time when I was reading nothing but French books. Anything about the French culture, I was reading it. That was my jam. And then I moved into coaching books, like learning about psychology and mindset. And I still enjoy those books because as a coach, I think it's important for us to stay on top of our skill set because, you know, we're learning so much about the brain. I think we're just getting started. Honestly, I think there's so much that we don't know about the brain yet. And so I want to stay on top of that, you know, science and the science of psychology and brain health. But I'm asking myself that question right now. Like, what is this next chapter of your life? What do you want it to feel like? Who do you want to become? What are your goals? And I want to choose books that nurture that, that feed that. And so I'm really excited about this habit. I'm excited to wake up in the morning and read. I'm excited to go to bed at night and read. I haven't done that in so long. I think I'm going to sleep better as a result. Although I sleep pretty good now, but I think getting back into the habit of reading is going to have so many positive benefits on my life. Now, the third habit that I am going to focus on creating this year is another one that I used to do religiously. And I still do it, but not as religiously as I used to. Because I think what happens is that when you do this habit that I'm about to share with you, you you become really good at doing it to the point that you don't think you need to do it anymore. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) It's almost like you can do it in your head without actually physically doing it. And so that habit for me is journaling. I used to journal religiously every single day, sometimes two times a day. I loved putting pen to paper with my fears, my crazy thoughts, my amazing and sometimes awful ideas. But I have journal after journal just packed with me. It's really what it is. It's like the the rawness of me. And I've noticed just like with reading, I haven't been doing it as much. And I've noticed that the days when I do it, I feel so much better. I'm more focused. I'm more clear. And one of the things that me and my community manager, Laura, did last year is we redesigned the Daily Five journal. It used to be called the Daily Three. And we sat down and we met about it. And we're like, it's the Daily Five. And it's a process of running you through step one through five of the self-image method, which you get access to as soon as you join the membership. I encourage you to go through that immediately after you go through orientation. But we have the most beautiful journal to accompany that, that you use day after day. And I have been doing that process since the new journal came out. And you all, I am telling you, the difference in how I feel the difference in how I'm showing up, the intentionality in which I'm showing up, how I'm treating myself, what I'm producing is so much better. And it's a very simple process. But this journaling just keeps you awake. Because I think last year I went asleep a little bit. (laughs) I was asleep on my phone. And so Doing this process on a daily basis, I know is going to have such a powerful impact on my life. Now, I can hear some of you all saying, Tanya, I hate journaling. I get it. I get it. It's so much easier some days not to. But I think it's even harder not to. Now that I've been doing it more religiously over the last few weeks, I'm like seeing, oh my goodness, this has such a positive impact on your life. And sometimes the things that have a positive impact on your life are hard. Just like exercising and eating well. It may be hard in the moment, but the result of it is so good. It's like a little date with yourself every day. Sitting down and asking yourself, like, what do I want today? Who do I want to be today? What do I need to let go of? 
What do I need to bring in? What am I grateful for? What am I proud of? What's my future like? All of those things, yeah, it requires mental effort. And sometimes we get mentally lazy. I got a little mentally lazy last year. I'm calling myself out right now. And I realized to step into that royal energy, it's time to wake up and let's go. And part of that is through journaling. Journaling and reading and unplugging. Now, let's talk about habit number four. This one, just talking about it, is bringing a little bit of sadness, but also a lot of delight. So a lot of you may know that one of the things that I did way back in the day when I decided I wanted to be a worldly woman, coming out the trailer, out the deep south, I was like, I want to be a worldly woman. Well, what does a worldly woman do? Well, she does wine. (laughs) She drinks wine. That is what a worldly woman does. And so I went on this quest to learn about the world of wine. I went to sommelier school. I started food and wine programs at country clubs. I became a food and wine writer. And wine has been sort of an accessory to my story for many, many years. And so when I think about wine and the vineyards that it's taken me and the experiences that I've had because of it, there's a little sadness when I'm about to share this next habit that I want to create this year. But there's also an excitement. I want to drink less this year. Now, I didn't say I want to stop drinking because I have this interesting relationship with alcohol. Number one, I don't really enjoy like liquor. Occasionally, if I'm in Mexico or any kind of like warm tropical area, I love, uh, you know, margarita. But I'm not one of those that orders, you know, uh, martini or vodka soda. I don't like liquor but I do enjoy my wine. Everything from champagne all the way to a sauterne and everything in between. I enjoy wine. But I've noticed that I can go a week without drinking wine. I can go two weeks. I've done it many times. But then I'll have moments where we're on vacation, the biggest moment, or we're out with a bunch of friends where I overdrink. I will have one too many glasses of wine. And one too many glasses for me is when I just don't feel good the next day. You know, it's not like I'm getting sloppy drunk. I just, you know, I, I, and I have a good time when I'm <laughs> a little tipsy. But I just don't feel good the next day. And so I had an interesting experience last night because my man Fonz, he doesn't really drink. He'll occasionally enjoy a cocktail or a glass of wine. But oftentimes we go out and he won't drink at all. And he has an amazing time. He has a good time no matter what. And I've just like watched him with awe. I'm like, that is amazing that you do that. And so last night, some friends invited us out to dinner and we went to Steak 48 here in Charlotte. And I decided, and usually when I go here, I always order a glass of wine because it's such a beautiful place and you're having maybe a great steak or a great you know piece of fish. And so I decided I'm not drinking wine. And instead I ordered hot tea. And they brought out the beautiful little tea kettle and my little tea cup. And I sat there and watched myself drinking hot tea when everybody around me was drinking wine. And when we got home, Fawn said, don't you feel great? And I said, you know what? I actually do. I actually feel great. I'm not coming home, you know, feeling foggy. I'm not coming home feeling like I'm going to have to sleep in. And then we got up this morning early and went to Lifetime to the gym. And I had like the best workout. It felt so good. And so this year, I want to create the habit of just drinking less. And for me, that's probably going to be, you know, one to two glasses of wine a week. Like when I go out to dinner, maybe having one glass of wine, or maybe not having any. I'm open to the possibility that I won't have any. And it's all going to depend on how I feel. If I am already feeling tired and I know that tomorrow I want to get up and go to the gym, I'm going to practice not having any wine. 
If I know that we're out celebrating a dear friend's birthday and I want to have a glass of champagne, I'm going to enjoy every ounce of it. Because for me, I don't feel like I have a problem with alcohol. Like I can generally say like I could give it up and would it, it's more about the story. It's more about the association that I have with my past and the role that it's played. But I can go without drinking. I just enjoy the celebration of it. I enjoy how it tastes with food. But I know I can go without drinking, but I want to still have a glass when I want to and not feel bad about it. But I also know the times that I've been drinking excessively, like on vacation when, you know, margaritas start flowing around 5 p.m. and we just keep or maybe earlier and we just keep sipping them all day. And then the next day you just don't feel good. I just don't want to do that. Maybe every once in a while maybe once a year, I give myself a pass. But I want to feel clean this year. I want to feel healthy. And as we get older, our bodies change. Like what I can drink today versus even five years ago, and definitely 20 years ago is very different. I feel it more. And so I'm all about health this year. You know, when I think about Royal, I think about the Royal treatment, which is the workshop that we run every year. I want to give myself the royal treatment. I want to treat myself so good this year. I want to give myself the best. A lot of us women spend a lot of time giving our best to everybody else. And we leave the scraps for ourselves. And this year, I want to give myself the best. Because I know that when I do that, I'm going to have so much more to give everybody else around me. And so occasionally that may mean a glass of champagne, but it's not going to be every night that I go out two and three glasses. That's not me being good to myself. How do I know this? Because of how it makes me feel physically. And when you're not feeling good physically, it's so hard to show up in your fullness spiritually and emotionally. And so habit number four is drinking less in 2024. And then finally, habit number five is also around my physical health. I want to commit to getting so fit this year. I've been doing a lot of work on this. And this one's a this one's an interesting one because I think when people look at me, they think, oh yeah, she's pretty healthy. You know, she's fit. And for the most part I am, but I feel like I'm just getting started. I want to be an example of aging powerfully. I want to take such good care of my body. I want to get stronger. I want to get healthier. And I have to give a huge shout out to my man. He inspires me so much. I get a little teary just thinking about the impact that he's had on my life. He is, I don't know, he he may not want me to tell you his age, but he's in his 50s. And if you were to see him on the basketball court, he plays like he's like early 30s. He's playing with guys who are in their 30s and he's just crushing them. And he takes such good care of himself. And it's such a beautiful thing to witness how easily he says no to things that don't support him. He can be around everybody who's partying, having a good time. He's like, no, I don't want that. I want to feel good. I'm going to the gym. I'm being active. And he has inspired me so much. I think we call in our teachers. And he's definitely been a teacher for me because I thought I was pretty healthy. And then he saw me walking one day and he was like, you got a little bit of a limp. And I was like, yeah, I sort of feel it. He was like, no, your hips are off a little bit. He was like, I can see it. He was like, let's fix that. And so we started doing stretching and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, my hips hurt and my back hurts. Like I started revealing all of these things that I didn't even know how they had bad that they had gotten. And with him, I've been working so hard on stretching and getting my body aligned. And the other day, I realized how far I've come. Because I used to have a lot of pain when I would take my knee into my chest, like in my groin area. For those of you who know, you know. And now I can pull my knees in and there's just a little tinge of pain, but nothing like it was before. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is working. All of this stretching and getting stronger is working. So I just want to take that to the next level. And I told him this morning, I'm like, my commitment is three really good workouts every single week. 
because I'm active, I move every day, but I'm talking about focused, intense training to get stronger, to get more flexible, and to really treat myself royally. Because to me, that's what it means to see yourself as a queen, is to take good care of yourself spiritually, emotionally, physically. And so I'm really excited about that journey as well. And for those of you who are in the membership, I'll be bringing you along on this journey. I'll be sharing it with you, what I'm doing, and let's all do it together. Let's get healthy and get our aliveness back. Let's really focus on what matters. Let's unplug from the BS, whether it's your phone or people or whatever. Let's read books. Let's do the things that really make us feel alive, whatever that is for you. And so I want you to ask yourself this question. What are the habits that you could practice this year that would change how you see yourself? And it's going to be different for all of you. Some of you want to see yourself as a writer. Well, let's create the habit of writing. Some of you want to see yourself as wealthy. Well, let's change some of your money habits. But I want you to think about what are those habits that would change how you see yourself and let's do it. Let's commit to doing those things that truly make our lives better and make us better. I'm really excited for 2024, you all. I'm excited to get back into alignment, to get that aliveness back and to bring that energy to you all. Thank you so much. And hey, listen, don't forget, the membership is open. You can go to schoolofselfimage.com forward slash join. And I cannot wait to see you inside. And I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Hey, Have you grabbed your free copy of the School of Self-Image Manifesto? If not, what in the world? Head over to schoolofselfimage.com forward slash manifesto and get a copy that teaches you how to think and show up in the areas of mindset, style, and surroundings so that you can transform your self-image.